So today I'll be doing a quick motherboard unboxing. This is from MSI's gaming line of motherboards. You can tell because it has a big red G on it. Wow, I actually just realized as I was saying that, that this is a G. I knew about the color coding, but I had no idea. See, look, it's the same stylized G for gaming series. This is a micro ATX motherboard built on AMD's 890GX chipset. So it uses one of the latest chipsets from AMD. It is a G65 suffix, so the M means micro ATX. G65 denotes fairly high end, probably about as high end as you're going to go on MATX. Okay, we've got a few logos on the front, so why don't we have a look here. It's HDMI, so it has HDMI out. Excellent, thank you. It has security by Norton, okay. EUP, MSI ready, some kind of green thing based on that it's a tree. Then we have auto overclocking, OC Genie. This is actually a pretty cool feature. I had this, um, I covered this in my Core i5 overclocking guide. Then uh, we have six, SATA 6 gigabit per second or SATA 3, as well as USB 3.0. Let's go around to the back. It has a heat pipe and it supports lossless audio. Okay, let's open this thing up. So accessories. MSI does a pretty good job as far as their accessory packages go, but this is a micro ATX board, so you expect to find a little bit less. First, we've got an IO shield, so we can already see basically what we're gonna have on the back of the board, but I'm not gonna give away any surprises now. Then we have a drivers and utilities DVD. Um, don't use it. Download the latest off the MSI website. The quick installation guide is about three feet wide and shows us all of the basics. So they show us CPU, RAM, drive, graphics card, front panel headers, power, BIOS, OS, and driver installation. So you could in theory, oh, cameraman's trying to look at this for some reason. There you go. Okay, you could in theory set up your computer with this quick start guide. So thank you MSI for that. And then if that guide is not enough for you, then there is a full user's guide, which is thick and, uh, let's see, French. What else we got here? Uh, German and, oh wow, I don't know. Russian, I think. Also, I'm not, I'm not sure. And also English at the beginning. So it's a fairly thin manual, actually. There's not a whole lot to it. Okay, great. Next we have IDE, one Molex to SATA adapter, and one SATA cable. This, uh, yeah, you're probably going to want more than one SATA cable with a high-end board like this. I would have liked to see a couple more included, but the reality of it is SATA cables don't cost a whole lot, and if you're anything like me, you've probably got a couple hundred of them lying around anyway. So... Given that you don't need any kind of special SATA cable for SATA 6 gigabit per second, I think it doesn't make much of a difference how many they include. Okay, next we have the board itself. So, first of all, we have the power saving. So, APS, active phase switching. So, the unique power saving design for any OS. Basically, what they're doing is they're switching how many phases of power the CPU uses, depending on the load of the system. And it will actually use less power overall that way than if, say, they had a 16 phase CPU power delivery design, if you actually run all 16 phases at all times, it is going to hurt your power consumption, although it'll be delivering very clean power. So when you're delivering less power, you can actually turn off some of the phases. Okay, so here, why don't we start in the middle of the board where all the action is. This is an AM3 socket. So you have support for all the latest AMD quad cores, and since this is an 890GX, I would fully expect there to be support for the upcoming AMD 6-core CPUs. Next, we've got a 4-pin power connector up at the top left, so you can tell that they're not expecting to deliver a whole ton of power to the CPU, so you're not going to be doing any extreme like liquid nitrogen overclocking on this board, but it's going to be more than adequate, obviously, for even the highest TDP CPUs from AMD, which is 140 watt. Speaking of which, this is cooling your voltage regulation modules and then you've got one small heat pipe going down to the chipset so that's your 890 GX chipset and then down here is your south bridge which is running do, 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 do. Oh, I did it again. Five SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. So something to note about this AMD board versus any Intel board out there right now is that you've got six SATA 6 gigabit per second ports including your eSATA port on the back 
And that is more than you'd see on almost any Intel board because they're actually running off the AMD chipset rather than running off a third-party chipset added by the motherboard manufacturer. So that's pretty cool. You've only got five here, so the sixth one is actually on the back panel. Uh, DDR3. So we have support for dual channel DDR3 and they're color coded. So you would install the modules side by side. So if you have two modules, you'd put them both in the blue and then both in the black. Your 24 pin connector is in its ideal location along the right hand edge of the board. And let's see what else we've got here for regular, or rather regular, for interesting features. Easy OC switch. Let me see what kind of a switch they've implemented. I have never seen this particular switch before. So I would love to comment on how it works, but um, I actually don't know. The OC Genie switch I've seen before is just a push button. But uh, yeah, no, it looks like they've implemented a slightly different system this time around. So yeah, you just switch it back and forth like that. Oh, I hope I can put those back. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you've got USB headers, four. So you could hook up like four front USB ports, card reader, some other thing. Oh, here we go. Hey, 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 here's the manual. <laughs> Easy OC switch. It's right there on the motherboard. So default is both up. So for a 10% overclock, you push down switch number two. For a 15% overclock, you push down uh, switch number one. And then for a 20% overclock, you push down both switches. There you go. That's your easy OC switch. So let's put those back to no overclock. Okay, expansion cards. So you can put in two PCI Express 16X graphics cards one PCI Express 1X and one PCI. Now, I would have liked to see these two switched around because eh, if you're buying a relatively high-end, although micro ATX and thereby lower-end board, uh, you'd probably want to be using a dual slot video card. And if you're doing that, then you'd probably want to have an additional PCI E slot. That said, what they have done with this particular layout is they've given you a way to install one graphics card, one PCIe other card, so if you're not using two graphics cards, and then one PCI. So it seems like kind of a flexible layout, and you're, there's always compromises that you have to make on a micro ATX board as far as expansion slots are concerned, because there's only four. Let's have a look at the back of the board. So we've got one of those mouse keyboard PS2 combo ports. We have optical audio out. Then we have DVI, VGA, and HDMI. Then we have four USB 2.0 ports, one HDMI, one eSATA running at six gigabit per second. Then we have two USB 3.0 ports. Those are running at about 10 times the speed of the USB 2.0 ports. One gigabit ethernet, and then 7.1 onboard analog audio. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the 890 GXM G65 from MSI.